Now you're going to show the painting after the airbrush stage is completed. The reason for that being I'm going to have to practice filming my airbrush work. It's very tricky uh, using an, uh, an airbrush at the best of times, very noisy. I use a mask for instance to um, prevent me breathing in the, the vaporised paint. So I'll see what I can do in future videos for that but for the moment I'm just going to show you the, um, the tanks after they've been airbrushed. Now I used uh, a three toned soft modulated approach for base colour it's Vallejo model colour 821 which is German camel beige and that's going to be the shade and in the main well what's going to be what was going to be the main colour is Panzer Aces that's Vallejo Panzer Aces 340 Highlight Africa Core now this turned out to be a little bit too dark once it was airbrushed on Airbrush colours are not necessarily as solid as colours that you would paint on so you never really know until you've got them airbrushed in there and you know what the, the final look is. This was going to be the highlight colour only, uh, model colour 819 Iraqi Sand. But as it turned out it wasn't strong enough as a highlight on top of this um, highlight Africa core. So I went back and redid it and used a lot more of this the Iraqi sand um, and you get a, a modulated effect with panels being lighter at the top, darker at the bottom, hopefully a bit of middle ground but there's not going to be a lot of middle ground because I've had to use so much of this highlight but I'm quite happy with how bright it is. Now the next stages, of, the important stage is going to be gloss, varnish and then pin wash and I'll be taking you through that in more detail. Before I've reached that stage I have been painting on tracks and wheels and I do it at this stage to make sure there's maximum protection to the sides of the vehicle where it's likely to get handled the most. The colours I use for the tracks is Panzer Aces from Vallejo, um, Panzer Aces Track Primer. This is a great paint for, um, it's a great sort of brown earthy stone colour base for your tracks. It's got um, a little sign there, do not use it on an airbrush, that gives you an idea, it's quite a thick paint but you still have to be careful how you put it on and do it in two coats and for the tyres it's Panzer Aces again from Vallejo and it's dark rubber and that's 306 the, um, There's a lot, of, a lot of scope for making mistakes at this stage, you know, getting paint on return rollers and idlers and um, gear, uh, sprocket gears and fenders, all these kind of things so I don't try to be over careful, I just take the opportunity at a later stage to fix any problems and here I'm using the shade colour that I originally airbrushed on, that's the German Camo Beige and just do a quick tidy up and it saves you doing your neck in and your eyes in trying to be super careful at this stage where you're putting all these large areas in. The Panzer three wheels were easier to paint than the Panzer four wheels because the Panzer four wheels have got a much smaller rim and they're going to take a lot more tidying up uh, and there's more wheels on the Panzer four as well. But the process is really quite straightforward and simple. Let's have a quick look over. Quick touch up. And you have a really nice, neat finish. Now, I originally intended to use Tamiya. I've got a nice sand coloured paint, but I discovered that I didn't have any left. So I'm on to Vallejo, which is a which is a great paint for brushwork and airbrush work. But I am unfamiliar with this colour palette, so I've got to be careful. Now I'm going to be repeating this across all the tanks. I need to fix that bit of the somehow managed to get some paint on that tyre. 
Now, as I mentioned, I am unfamiliar with the, the palette that I'm using, so I actually move one on quite a lot after I've completed the airbrush. You can see I've got the tools painted, I've got storage painted, I've got scratches on, some more work on the modulation. Uh, my, my initial aim was to have this as being the only shade on the figure. Now I think this might look quite good in a picture, but I don't think it's going to necessarily look all that good on the tabletop. It needs a bit more shade, so that's why I'm going to be gloss varnishing it. I prefer to avoid gloss varnish if possible because it darkens the figure down and I want these to be nice and bright. But I think it's unavoidable. So the next stage when I come back, after I've done all the touching up here, is to uh, show you this gloss varnished and then the shading process using enamel um, washes, which I think about a very useful thing for you guys to see, particularly to see how I do it, because I don't do it in the, the way that you would normally see them uh, with a, a painting it on and cleaning it up later. I get it on and it's staying on exactly as I want it to be on. Try and you know keep the surface as clean as possible. So I'll be coming back to that. I'll also be touching up. 88 a bit because to be honest uh, they are not anywhere near bright enough so I'll be going back in with some highlight on the airbrush and um, and brightening them up. It's got a nice bit of modulation there but it's just a bit too dark. So you're going to see a bit more hands on from this point onwards. Um, I'll show you airbrushing in more detail in later videos once I'm comfortable with how I'm going to video that. So I've had a bit of a change of heart. I'm not going to go straight on to the gloss varnish. The reason for that is best seen in this, um, this one that I've progressed a bit further than the rest. There's lots and lots of scratches on it and these aren't the scratches I would usually do which would be a little bit of wear and tear and lighter. He's not using a lighter colour along the edges to make a highlight, but this isn't really a highlight. It's more of a, a, a surface, under the surface. So it's, it should look at part of the surface and not something on top. And for me to get that look, I'm going to have to apply the scratches before I do the wash, before I do the uh, gloss varnish and the wash and then these scratches will settle in, otherwise they're going to sit on top and just not look right. So there's a couple of things, I need to get these scratches on, but before that I need to do some fading and uh, extra highlights along particular edges. So uh, I'm going to demonstrate how I do that just now. You can see, I hope, I've brightened up the edges on this and there's a bit of streaking across the darker areas just to help draw dark to light across um, the panels, mostly the vertical vertical panels. So I am going to make a start on, let me see, this one here. Okay, so I'll take my highlight colour. Just taking a little bit of paint. I'm not going to show you the palette as I'm working here, folks. Um, I really would need two cameras, I think, to do it justice. But just to let you know, I have a little bit of paint and a little bit of water. You've got a lot more control if you're in control of your water and not taken directly from your water cup. So. Let's start with the turret. Oh, start with the turret. That's not the turret. This is a turret. So, this has had some fading done already, but it still needs a bit more and a highlight. So, I'm going to draw that line along there. I'm going to clean my brush and then, using the paint that's already there. Going to draw it down. 
soften this line a little. Spread it a little to the side. A similar idea on the front of this turret. That just goes down into darkness. We really need to be able to pick out the shape a bit more. So very, very, very careful. Line. Now the paint is quite thin. Want to try and bump up the side just a bit. I've done some feeding on the side already, but I shall, shall do some more. So it looks a bit thick for me, that paint. Yeah, that's okay. Clean the brush. To draw it down. I'll use existing lines and soften. Soften things. I also want to accentuate this little corner here. Now, I strongly recommend you always paint into where you want the strongest tones to be. I'm going to push that back. Because your point your brush will leave the most paint. So you'll notice I'll be painting along a line, a panel like that, not like that. That's where the I'll be doing it like that, sorry. Painting up the way. Oh sorry, I'm I've right the first thing, sorry. I'll be painting like that. So that I'm pushing the paint towards the top. Similar idea here. Get some paint on. I'm just going to try and catch these highlights here. What's the matter? And then, using existing lines I already put on, I'm going to draw that down. Then highlight along there. You see the paint's really quite wet. It's just a little bit more intense than a glaze. And then bringing it into here as well. Go back to that part. Along here. Clean the brush. Before I draw that down, keep your lines as straight as possible. And you can also get some on the other side. Don't have to be too careful down here because it is quite out of sight. Just break up any shadows and darkness in there. the top of the barrel as well can be a bit loosened free with the barrel it's just as long as you try and keep the strongest colour on that high point now I'll go through and pick out all these details in a minute I want to move on to the hull first but one thing is I would Brush is too dry, put a little bit of paint in my palette. Pick that out on the top and on the sides but not on the bottom. So, I 
finished the edge highlighting and fading so now I'm going to move on to the chipping and here was my sort of my test piece from earlier I'm going to work on this theme I might do more, I might do less a bit of variety is definitely a bonus when it comes to weathering so the chipping colour is going to be German grey normal chipping I would use German camel dark brown for rusty metal but what I want to do here is show the original base colour of German grey showing through now it may be the case that not all the tank would have had German grey under there. I'm not sure. I'm sure that they may be painting some of them in desert colours in the factory but I'm going to go for this look because I quite like it. Now using a tiny tiny little brush and I'm going to be putting on far too much. <laughs> that's too much but that's chipping for you. It can be more or less. And basically Bouncing the brush off edges. I want to come along this line here. Try and get myself in the centre of the picture. One moment. There we go. I'm going to refresh my brush. When you're using a small brush with small amounts of paint, it will get dry very quick. And there I've sort of framed the panel, so I'm going to make this a area of more intense chipping. And then try and break the panel up a bit. It also helps accentuate. The modulation as you bring these shapes from dark through to the light. Once again just bouncing off these edges. I would normally do the chipping as part of the, part of the highlight process to help accentuate the uh, edges of panels. In this case, it's as I said before, it's a different different kind of look we're going to get. Brush is very dry. And then along top of the barrel, just a bit of wear. And we're probably with the weather striking down on it. to 
too much, one second, but Serena and this is looking too extensive. Archies are a bit tricky. I'll try and catch that line first. And then that's the paint actually too wet. I have not tried to brush off right, but it's quite forgiving if you're quick enough. Try that again. There you go. Now you're done. Hatch is going to take a bit of work. You'd expect her to be a fair bit of wear. On the edges of the hatches. Not particularly well. Try and get something on the inside to Now that's to me that's a bit rough looking but I think it will look a bit better when the the wash has been applied. And once again we we'll just break up this a little bit. So I'm now going to do this over the entire tank. So I'll come back to you when that's done and we can consider our next steps which may well be the gloss varnish before the wash. As I'm working through the chipping, I just want to stop just now and let you see the difference between tanks that have been chipped and tanks that haven't been chipped. You can see the pans of fours and the pans of threes. Up to the point where you see the pans of fours completed, the pans of threes were done in the same way, there's no difference. Then you add the chipping in and it makes a, a huge difference. It, you see it starts to create a patina on the, uh, the flat surfaces, it brings everything together. So these will very shortly look the same as that, but I think it's an interesting comparison to make to show the, the, the effect of the chipping is more than just the visual evidence of chipping, it changes uh, the surface. And I think that was important why I did this before proceeding with the wash, but I'll carry on just now. That's the chipping process finished and a coat of gloss varnish on. I'll go into airbrushing in more detail in a dedicated video at some point. Uh, what I'll say for this is I used uh, uh, Tamiya Clear. It's a, a gloss varnish that I feel is less, um, it's less heavy when it goes on than the Vallejo and you've got a bit more control I feel and therefore you don't end up with so much of a dark result. Now I'll just move in a bit so you can get a look at the chipping. Now when you're chipping as much as I have on these, I would recommend that every time you complete a vehicle you walk away, reset, or you could end up going a bit crazy. First of all because it will drive you crazy and secondly because you may end up putting on far too much chipping. So you can see here I've 
uh, try to accentuate panel edges with larger areas of chipping and hatches and such like, as well as just general wear and tear which is concentrated to a large degree on the edges. So the next step is going to be decals and then it's a wash. So I'm just going to put the decals on. I'll be using um, decal softener to fit them around the, the hatch point where they'll be mounted and then we'll show the washing process in some detail. I just want to quickly go over what happened with the decals. Um, I had a bit of a nightmare. Partly because I didn't put enough gloss varnish on the areas I was going to put the decals on and the decals themselves had to cut around the hatches just a little bit to get a nice tight fit. I'll be going over the decals where there should be some scratches to make sure that that's um, reflected so they look part of the surface. But I also had an issue where the, uh, the clear coat I'd used, I don't know if you can see it on this, but it was actually a bit too soft and I think it was too soon after I'd used it and my fingers were wet so the it left little marks when I was handling it. So just something to be wary of, make sure that if you're relying on that um, gloss coat that it's got enough time to dry. And I had a couple of little tank symbols of a Stuka. I'm going to put them on the 88 gun shield instead of kill rings. It's, it's different from what you might normally see, but I think it's a nice touch. I'll do, what I'll do is I'll put little lines, you know, marking them off, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and so on, just to show some uh, kills. Anyway, I'm going to leave them now. Um, make sure that clear coat has dried and then I'll be getting on to the gloss varnish and I reckon it's gloss varnish, the washing and I reckon I'm going to leave that until tomorrow. So as I said folks just make sure you're giving your clear coat a chance to dry before you start handling it in any gateway.